Hi there, here we have Sasha Pallenberg. And this is Nicole Scott. And this is the final day of Computex 2012. Almost the final day. Almost. It's Friday right now, and we still have this public day on Saturday, but I guess I'm not hitting the show floor then. Yeah, we need to save our eardrums because all the yelling, we just can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nicole, what do you think of this year's Computex? You know, I love Computex. It's one of my favorite shows of the year, but I have to, I, I have to admit, as a, as a reviewer, it's difficult to kind of get into it. We saw some really cool products, but we know that all the OEMs and manufacturers are waiting for Windows 8 to actually release their good products. So it's difficult to suggest something that people should buy when we know that there's going to be something coming out in just a couple of months. How about you? What do you think? I thought it was the most predictable Computex ever, right? This was my 11th Computex right now, and uh, I mean, we've been talking uh, about w what we might see over here already a couple of months ago because we know that Intel is going to push their Iverbridge platform into the market. We knew about Windows 8, the consumer preview, and that we were going to see touchscreen ultra books because Intel has been showcasing a prototype during CBET back in March. And um, we also knew that we we're going to see some R ARM platform uh, running Windows RT. And therefore, I thought it was kind of boring because even this new fancy schmancy ultra book category kind of hits a limit where I can't see it really evolving anymore besides of having bigger and thicker and heavier ultra books right now because we've seen a couple of ultra books over here that I wouldn't even call an Ultrabook anymore. I'm the not Asus, getting it. The ASUS S-Series, right? That, that's what you're, what you're referring to? The ASUS S-Series, um, the Dell Inspiron 14Z, um, the Toshiba, this the, white screen thingy. What is it, like U, two kilograms? Yeah, the, the U845W. W. Yeah. Gee, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Maybe they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna call an all-in-one PC an Ultrabook in the future. I don't know. I think Intel really needs to take care of this because otherwise they're going to create a lot of fragmentation in their uh, new product category. Well, the thing is, I attended a round table um, for... Um, the, the Microsoft Windows 8 release and in that in that roundtable they actually said that we were going to be seeing ultrabooks with detachable screens so that they were just going to be tablets with keyboards and that was going to actually going to be the product category so I mean we're just we, we're, we are seeing an incredible fragmentation right now in the ultrabook category that's true and besides that um, in terms of real innovation uh, once again we have to give, give some credit to ASUS mm -hmm. and these guys were the only ones to come up with a new design with this Tai Chi. Uh, not sure if anyone is going to buy it. Right? It, it, it's actually the same size as uh, this Asus ZenBook, but it has an 11.6 inch display, an IPS display, 1080p on the backlit, and another one from the inside. Um, it's also as thin as a ZenBook, so I'm kind of doubting a competitive battery life on this device. Well, that's the I thing. Just... What do you think? It's going to be 90 minutes? <laughs> How long <do> you <laughs> that's what I would guess, minutes? right, if you're running on both displays. <laughs> right. It was so thin. And it, it was more like a tech demo, right? Just what, what you can do, because I'm just not getting the story that Asus was trying to explain around this. So you, the parents are going to work on the one side, and the kids are going to watch a video on the other side. Yeah. That's, that's not going to work. You know, you just invest into a screen for the kids <laughs> when yeah. they can watch videos instead of getting a Tai Chi, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I really think that it's going to add to like the disarray and fragmentation of the family. So you, you don't want to talk to your spouse, put something up on the other side. You don't want to talk to your kids, throw up a screen for them. I mean, like it's just an added excuse not to interact with people in front of you. So I'm not entirely sure that like the family values will appreciate this device. In general, well, what we have to say is whether we're talking about the so-called PC category and the so-called post-PC category, it, it gets a little bit boring for me right now. We have this red race in the PC industry about our faster processors, more cores, right, more performance, and this is happening now with the post-PC category. Um, it's really hard to to stumble upon some solutions and, and an infrastructures. Actually, well, Samsung had an infrastructure for an e-learning classroom that I really liked, right, with a huge uh, whiteboard, an electronic whiteboard, an all-in-one PC for the teacher, and netbooks as a client. That was pretty neat, but that, that was pretty much the only solution that I've seen over here at Computex. Yeah, yeah, there, 
Like, it's difficult to get excited about anything. I don't know. Well, okay, there's one thing. There was definitely not a single wow factor at the CS Computex. It was predictable. There was nothing groundbreaking new. Well, and I think I think that one of the main things that 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 we're seeing is that hybrids now are a defined category that are, that is going to be something that is going to be a staple within the computing lineup for the future. I mean, before it was just ASUS, and now I think it's just going to be everybody's joined that. So that's kind of one interesting thing that I found from the And show. I would love to refer to my tablet market analyze from uh, last year's August, uh, where I exactly said this. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the year of the hybrid and of convertibles. Um, that's what we're seeing right now. And uh, of course, Microsoft built up a huge momentum over here, mm -hmm. um, especially also with uh, the Windows RT versions that look really neat on a Snapdragon platform or on a Tegra 3. So I can't wait to get my hands on these devices. And you know, developers out there, <laughs> you know, be prepared to uh, recompile all your applications and programs now for risk architecture. Good luck with that. <laughs> So anyways, let's, let's sum it up. Um, Computex, it's, it still is an exciting show, but may, maybe we've been expecting too much from it and we were knowing too much about what's going to happen over here at Computex. So that's why we might be a little bit disappointed. Well, and I also just think that like, it's, a, you know, it's, it's a perfect storm of, of different circumstances where Windows 8 doesn't really have a firm release date. Back to school shopping is, is, is kind of kicking off. Ivory Bridge is completely ready to go. So the hardware manufacturers want to push stuff, but the software ecosystem just isn't quite there yet. So I mean, I think there was just a different set of variables that made this Computex just a little too predictable for our liking, I think. Well, absolutely. Yeah. But anyways, we're going to be here next year at Computex 2013. 2013, I'm whispering already. <laughs> long show. <laughs> it was a long show. And this is about the 500th video that we did, at Some, least. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, this is Nicole Scott. Here we have Sasha Pallenberg. Thanks for watching.